Okay, so before we dive deep into each of the functional groups, um, I wanted to give more of an introduction to hydrocarbons since they're a kind of subgroup that includes a lot of different functional groups that we'll be talking about a lot. So the hydrocarbon is again um, an organic compound that contains only carbon and hydrogen atoms. It's exactly what it sounds like. And we already kind of looked at them where we said that an alkane is the one just with single bonds. An alkene has carbon-carbon double bonds. As long as it has just one carbon-carbon double bond, it counts as an alkene. And an alkyne has an, a carbon-carbon triple bond. And then we also mentioned the benzene ring um, is a type of hydrocarbon. And we call this one an aromatic hydrocarbon. Um, and it gets the name just because benzene rings uh, and other compounds that are similar to benzene. So if, if we combine multiple of them, for example, they, they are known for giving off strong odors. So that's where they get the name aromatic hydrocarbons. Um, and they can also be represented by this. So this is showing just kind of hiding the hydrogens, but it's pretty much the exact same uh, dry, diagram. And then another way is this circle. And the reason for that is because we mentioned that the benzene ring can have resonance. So each of these double bonds can actually kind of move around. And so I can draw a resonance structure showing the, that, that the double bonds moved around. So I just showed that, for example, this bond here, it pushed there. So now that it's over here. And so what happens with that ring is these bonds just keep interchanging between the two. So we said that it actually, each carbon-carbon has um, a halfway between a single and a double bond. So it's a quite unique structure. There's resonance. Um, and the electrons are delocalized, meaning that they're f those inner electrons are f keep moving around. And so that's why it's sometimes shown by this circle. OK, so we're going to get into some terminology. And one thing I'll just point out here is we mentioned that this is aromatic. So we refer to that as things that look like this benzene ring. And then the other category of hydrocarbons is aliphatic, which includes the alkane, alkene, and alkyne. So another set of terms for us to go over is unsaturated versus saturated. So all you have to know is saturated just means the maximum amount of hydrogens. So out of an alkane, alkene, and alkyne, which do you think has the maximum amount of hydrogens? So notice that all of these that in the diagram are showing with two carbons, and the alkane has the most hydrogens. And as you increase the number of bonds, the hydrogens goes down. So the one with the maximum number of hydrogens is the alkane, and that's why we call the alkane a saturated hydrocarbon. So alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons, and the other ones, alkenes and alkynes, they're unsaturated hydrocarbons because they don't have the maximum number of hydrogens. So we're just looking if it has the maximum number of hydrogens or not. So next, we're just looking at general formulas for an alkane, an alkene, or an alkyne. So let's look at an alkane. This formula is the general formula. And it's not going to come in handy right at this point in the chapter, but it will come in handy um, later on when we're drawing structures. And I'll mention it. But pretty much, if you're told, let's say, C6H blank, what would it have to be for it to be an alkane? So N is our 6. So there would be 2 times 6 plus 2. So 2 times 6 is 12 plus 2 is 14 hydrogens. So if I saw C6H14, then I know I'm looking at an alkane, and I should draw everything with single bonds, and I don't have an alkene or an alkyne. So we can actually, to illustrate this and make sure we fully understand this, we can count the number of carbons and hydrogens in each of these alkane, alkenes, and alkynes. So in the alkane, we have two carbons, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens, right? So then the formula makes sense where you take your n number of carbons, multiply by two, and add two to get six hydrogens. Now what about the alkene? So for the alkene, we see two carbons as well, but I only see four hydrogens. So notice that whatever number of carbons you have, you just multiply by two to get the number of hydrogens. So that's why the formula down here for an alkene is CnH2n. So the example was C2H4. And finally, for an alkyne, we have two carbons as well. And here we only have two hydrogens. So the formula is CnH2n minus 2. 
So for us, we had two carbons. So if we multiply two by two, you'll get four and subtract two, you get two. So knowing these general formulas can come in handy because if we were told, for example, we have C2H2, we know that we couldn't draw it like this and we know that it's not an alkane, okay? So this formula can tell us about what function, which of these functional groups we're looking at. And this, again, it's not gonna come in handy right away in this chapter, but it's going to come in handy when we're drawing out structures. Okay, and finally, the last terms to understand is aliphatic versus aromatic, which we mentioned. So aromatic is specifically referring to the, um, something that res is resembling this benzene ring, and aliphatic are any of these hydrocarbons aside from the aromatic ones, so your alkanes, your alkenes, and your alkynes. Okay, so these down here includes alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. And another one is cyclic hydrocarbons. So we'll see this in a bit, but an example of a cyclic hydrocarbon is if we just take carbon and hydrogen atoms and we put them in a cycle. Now it's not the same as a benzene ring because we don't have that resonance like we saw for a benzene ring, like we mentioned up here. So um, the cyclic hydrocarbon is still considered an aliphatic hydrocarbon, whereas aromatic hydrocarbons is any compound that has a, a similar structure based on benzene. So that's C6H6. And again, we mentioned that benzene has all of its six carbons in that ring in an intermediate length between a single and double bond because of resonance. So now that we've got it, gone through the terms, we can dive deeper into this chapter.